Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for another model, build and tactics review and today we're looking at the Mechanicum Krios Venator battle tank. And yes, here we are in front of us. The Krios Venator. Uh, this was the second um, battle tank to be released for the Mechanicum by Forge World as part of the Horus Heresy line. Uh, and it's um, it was built around the uh, original chassis from that was used on the Krios battle tank that you can see uh, in the background on the right. However, the uh, the appearance of the vehicle has been changed somewhat in this particular iteration, and we've moved from um, uh, like a something of a main battle tank into something that's more like a uh, a short range assault gun, um, and indeed this. Uh, uh, you know, and that this is exemplified by this uh, unusual and intriguing weapon called the Pulsar Fusel. Um, yes, it's it's got the same sort of. Um, this again was sculpted uh, like the original Krios. This was sculpted by uh, Stuart Williamson, and it's got the same sort of visual cues uh, that made that original Krios so distinctive. So we've got the skeletal, uh, lightweight appearance of this tank and. Uh, Let's uh, let's go in a bit closer to uh, see some of these details up close. Yeah, so same track units. Um, the the kit is identical apart from all the components around this the gun assembly, uh, and indeed the, even the gun assembly is similar to the original Krios, from about here all the way up to here. And this new front section is new. This armoured mantlet or gun shield is is new, uh, and then it also comes with a new uh, adept crew member. So it's nice to have a a bit of a change from the last guy, and this leads us nicely into taking a look at some of the um, close detail and what a fantastically detailed cockpit uh, this thing has. And it's got this uh, you know this guy much like the uh, HR Giga's navigator this guy looks like he's grown out of the seat um yeah i've had this kit for a couple of years i i bought it for um i bought it for a a large apocalypse game so i i really needed to uh bolster my mechanicum forces and i kind of just snipped off the sprues and threw it together quickly uh, and basically well threw it together as in tacked it together so i had a gaming model but then it kind of like sat in my to-do box for a long time um but i finally you know i'm uh, I'm catching up on uh, all my backlog of models and there's not much left to do now uh, and I'm uh, pleased to have got this one out of the way. Um, so kit quality, obviously this is a, we can't do an out of the pack review, but um, firstly, uh, just to, so you know, this is this comes with the photocopy style instructions. Um, and there's four sides to this. Um, however, these are, these are actually pretty good. These um, and uh, there's no there's no real ambiguities in terms of which parts go where and in what order. Although um, when I talk about construction, I I did take a slightly different approach to the build sequence to what they suggest uh, in this pamphlet, uh, and I'll come to that when I uh, when we talk about the. Um, construction but yeah so it's, I mean but another fantastically weird looking mechanical vehicle and you know I mean it's got this bizarre looking main gun it's got this gun shield and then it's got this strange peculiar um, these prongs and these are called uh, electroconductors and then there's kind of like these little nodes that sit on the the gun and you can always imagine power arcing from these things onto those or perhaps those onto these things to ground it I don't know it's certainly um, an intriguing looking thing and and these things remind me of something out of a 1920s science fiction movie you know you could imagine those in the lab of Dr Frankenstein or perhaps uh, being used by Ming the Merciless to read the mind of Flash Gordon very um, retro style um, this gun mantlet keeps a lightweight design of a tank and it has these large voids um, cut into the material of the shield I presume presumably to keep the weight light 
uh, but it's also got it's also got the flare shield generators mounted on the front of that. Um, so interesting styling there. Now what I'm going to do um, uh, because this is such a complicated 3D model, um, it's not there's lots of it that's not stuck together yet. So uh, I'm to kind of take you through what the build was like. I'm going to dismantle it. Um, to break it down and then I can sort of tell you some of the ideas about it and then we'll put it back together and then I'll go on and talk about the tactics. Yeah, so, um, yeah, build. So, kit quality on this, um, was it was all right. There were a few parts that weren't brilliantly, that, I mean, there was nothing horrendous on it, but there was, I mean, these track units, the inside of these, there was a lot of filling work to do there because it was rather roughly finished, just like on the original Krios battle tank. Um, I had to do, I had to do a lot of filling on bits of tracking and also the rear of the actual gun assembly itself. And on the underside of the gun, um, there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of filling to do on there and quite a bit of mold slippage. Although you can't see most of it, but it still took took me a long time to. Um, to put that right um, I mean so let's now start to dismantle this so remove a gun mantlet uh, and then we will take these track units away as well and then that leaves us with the core shell of the tank so just pop that down first and I'll just show you these track units so first we've got these crazy wagon wheel things I don't know what they do Still not 100% decided on those yet. Um, but yeah, so this is, you can see the filling work I had to do on the inside of these. Um, and I decided that this these, there was kind of like a really unpleasant ridge stroke, uh, almost like furrow running around this line. And I had to make a decision as to whether or not I was going to turn that furrow into, furrow into like a consistent gap all the way around or fill it so I decided to fill it and you know it's, it, it, to, to get the decent finish and once it's painted look good but it, it did take a long time to do all that and had to be done on both sides but um, it seems to be a bit of a characteristic of these tanks and the original Krios was like that and also the Triaros um, I've recently got a similar as well right let's have a look at this so you know, let's have a look at some of the detail Got a bit of underside detail again, which is nice. This part here um, is a gun shield. I've not stuck that onto aid painting. Um, when I got this, this was a bit too wide to fit between these cogs, and I've tried to get these cogs as sort of vertical as I can. You can't quite fully do it. Um, but because of that, I had to pinch this in a bit to allow it to fit. Um, this guy here is a, isn't an easy fit. I would recommend you get him posed and in position before you actually build it. Uh, put the cogs and stuff together. I, I didn't and I paid a bit for that with uh, faffing around getting it done later. But it looks nice once it's done. There's another bit of detail here, which is this thing, which is called the... Uh, ooh, let me find its name. I'll just have a quick look on the parts list. The Sighting Servitor. And this kind of like looks a bit like what happens if you cross the Mechanicum with the um, sort of targeting system from a Star Wars A New Hope from the trench run with the uh, X-Wings and Y-Wings. And this is supposed to mount on a peg here at the back. And then sort of he, he looks into it. I've left it out for a moment because it's, it's such a... The, the cockpit is so crowded and busy. Um, it's just it seems to be a bit too much going on. I might add it on later. It might be. It's not. It could be used for another part. Um, other construction tips. So, in the instructions, uh, just let me show you this. It shows the assembly of putting the track units in first. I didn't. I've not stuck these because to help with painting. And then you build up the deck. Um, and then complete half of the tank. And then finish the tank. Um, I I departed from that approach slightly, uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, this is so, one of the things about the build. This is it's such a complicated build with so many parts that interlink together, um, and 
with it being a forged old resi kit, so many things are slightly not true. Uh, and and the end objective is, with this is to get everything together, but also to make sure these track units uh, sit properly um, and sit flat. So I what I did was I built, I attached this front plate to this base plate first. I then attached a transmission unit and then got all the other parts ready, test fitted them a lot, and then used, then glued them up with some high viscosity super glue, so had some working time, and put the whole thing together at one go. Cogs, main body, side plates, whacked as it was still wet, whacked these on, and then got it on the got it on the deck and held it until it was stuck. And that made and basically that helped me get a make sure it was all true. So that's a bit different, and uh, you know, you kind of need, you know, you find yourself as in a, in a bit of a gene stealer hybrid situation where you uh, feel you need extra hands. Um, but yeah, so just wanted to bear in mind. Um, now these, I attached these, and I fit these perfect to the. It's difficult to see, but there's kind of like a set. There's like a like a post that those fit perfectly against. I glued those on before I put this together and regretted it because they turned out to be not entirely true. And actually the one on the uh, on your left or the left as we're looking at it was too low. So I had to go back and, cr and fashion a one millimeter thick piece of resin to act as a spacer. So the gun mantle was level on both sides. So uh, I'll probably advise putting these on at the end and, and doing so um, with test fitting with this as well because they're not quite when everything else is lined up they're not quite true um, these two the electro conductors I attach those using some fast setting uh, two-part epoxy glue and that's because they're, they're, they're very thin and uh, rather difficult to pin and because of the fact you know you've got a relatively small contact zone and a long sticking out part I think that I th I attached those with some very strong adhesive to uh, make sure they were firmly fixed. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, so yeah, a couple of points on the detail. I mean, you know, much like the original Krios, the detail on this is one is fantastic. I mean, the detailing on the barrel is brilliant. Um, when I, if you watch my introduction in my weekly update video for this week, um, I said I'll pose a question: Could Stuart Williamson make the Krios? Veneta any weirder than the original Krios and I think he succeeded and to, to, to appreciate the true weirdness of this one we need to remove the cowl of the pulsar fusel to see the innards of the gun and what a bizarre looking weapon As I, I mean yeah you normally need to get into the world of tyranids to get for this sort of weirdness I looked at this and I kind of I, well let me show you with a prop what I thought straight away Orange juicer, pulsar fusel, pulsar fusel, orange juicer. You see? Yeah. I, I wonder if uh, the sculptor had been having uh, lots of uh, lots of citrus when he designed this. Yeah. You see, this cost ninety nine p from uh, Poundland. Now, thinking you could do a Titan sized pulsar fusel with one of those. Anyway, right. That's enough of uh, enough kitchen wares for now. Uh, back to the uh, back to the Krios Veneta, but yeah, a, a truly bizarre looking tank and in a really good way. So let's uh, let's put it all back together now. Uh, another thing on the construction, the I had to do a lot of heat bending and manipulation of the gun shield to get that to fit well. That was quite tricky. Um, so something uh, you uh, want to give a, give a little bit of time and thought to. So, um, well, what did I think of the uh, think of the build overall? Um, it was it's funny with this. It was to be honest, it was a bit obnoxious at times, um, and that's not because the kit doesn't fit properly together like uh, you know like some of the experiences i've had with forge world kits more because it's just uh, it's just actually a very complicated design and quite tricky to to 
put all the parts together and get them all aligned and get them square or as close to square as you can. So um, yeah, yeah, a bit tricky. But but that said, um, uh, I do think the amount of time and effort I put in was well worth it. Uh, and the end result, um, you know, as I've said, uh, does look great and it is a fantastic looking vehicle uh, and a very, uh, a very fascinating addition to the Mechanicum Force. So uh, let's talk tactics now. I'm going to, uh, so I'm referring to the Mechanicum Tagmata Army List book um, as a source for uh, my uh, rules as opposed to any of the black books. Uh, so the Krios Veneta is an upgrade uh, to a standard Krios battle tank. Uh, so, it's, so the Krios battle tank is a heavy support slot. You can have up to three Krios in a single slot. Uh, and the basic cost of 125, you add an extra 25 points um, on to create turn into the tank Krios Veneta tank destroyer with a pulsar fusel. So the tank is 150 points. So the rules, just like the Krios, um, it's a it's a vehicle with the tank and the fast rules. So fast rule um, means it's very agile. Uh, the, for war gear, it's got the pulsar fusel, the ser a searchlight, a flare shield, a blessed auto simulacra, and a galvanic traction drive. So the galvanic traction drive um, forces failed dangerous terrain tests to be re-rolled. Um, You've got a, a relatively small selection of upgrades. You've got extra armor, hunter killer missile, smoke launchers, an arbic claw, so that inflicts uh, d6 strength 5 hits at initiative step 10 to assaulting infantry. And you can add up to two Volkite Sentinels for 15 points each. And a Volkite Sentinel uh, is an independently targeting Volkite charger, so you can basically always shoot them regardless of your move and uh, any number of targets. Um, so, I mean, out of those upgrades, I mean, uh, extra armor has got a, some value. It's not as useful as normal because the, the pulsar fusel is ordnance. Um, so you don't get as much benefit there as you would on a, on a non ordnance tank. Um, the hunt killer and the smoke launchers are worth worthy of consideration. Apart from that, I'll keep it as it is because um, you can spend a lot of points on this vehicle, but actually it's quite a simple, <coughs> excuse me, vehicle. Uh, and doesn't want overcomplicating and overspending on extras. Right, let's talk about the pulsar fusel because this is um, this is the what really sets this vehicle apart. Um, so the pulsar, the pulsar fusel is described as being a particle beam weapon from a dark age of technology. Uh, it has a range of thirty six inches, so it's of a comparable range to say the neutron laser. Um, of the Sikara and Veneta. Um, it's strength 9, AP2, so last cannon hitting power. Uh, special rules are ordnance 4 and pinning. So, yeah, the Pulsar Fusel has got tremendous firepower uh, and is equivalent to uh, four last cannon shots on steroids. Um, very potent indeed. Uh, and the pinning rule gives it some other useful, you know, means you can attack infantry and suppress them with it as well. But, you know, the main application of the of the Pulsar Fusel and the Krios Veneta in general is tank hunting. Now, I think there's two there's two ways to play the Veneta. The firstly, you can play it first to play it as part of a gun line, um, you know, with a front armor of thirteen and a flare shield. Um, you know, it's a tough cookie against incoming fire, and um, so could easily go toe to toe with land raiders and the like. Uh, alternatively, you can exploit the fast rule uh, to to move this onto flanks and go for flanking shots and uh, and uh, you know uh, maximize that anti armor capability even better. And obviously, the fast helps with offsetting that. Fair, slightly shorter than typical range of 36 inches, but very hard hitting indeed. Um, and you know, for 150 points, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, I mean, you know, if you think about comparable vehicles in the to this, I mean, obviously the Sikar and Veneta, uh, and then the Vindicator Laser Destroyer spring to mind. Um, both of those other two tanks are. 
have harder hitting weapons, either they've got better AP or higher strength or both. Um, however, the Pulsar Fusel um, certainly wins the wins the points uh, for sheer output of firepower, you know, and 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 it and you know, and it's it, it really is a great gun. So, um, what about thinking about some synergies then, and and other tactics? So I suppose other tactics as well. I mean, you always want to keep your front armor facing forwards, bear in mind it's quite a long, thin vehicle, so you've got a fairly narrow front arc. You want to avoid getting taking flank shots because you've only got armor 12. Um, so a bit more, <coughs> excuse me, fragile than some vehicles. Yeah, synergies. So there are a few Warlord options that work well with this. So uh, in terms of an Arch Magos, um, uh, an Archimandrite, is useful for to improve blessed auto simulacra to it will not die uh, and then a gin skein with supporting cyber ocularis are useful as well um, firstly with your cyber ocularis you can move them close to enemy units to reduce cover saves and secondly with the gin skein uh, you can confer um, an extra point of ballistic skill uh, onto the um, Krios Venator and and that's uh, obviously you know to get ballistic skill five is a uh, is great with with the ordnance with uh, the pulsar fusel uh, and I certainly uh, used it that way several times. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now uh, the I don't think these mix well between having standard Krios tanks and Venator tanks because you've got two different weapons. So in a single squadron, you don't really want your anti-armor Venators with your anti-heavy infantry Krios tanks. So the best kept separate, and that's a bit of a challenge if you want to have both because you've only got three heavy support slots. So it might be worth considering the Ordo Reductor list as well, which trades um, a troop heavy support and elite choice for an extra heavy support slot and that would allow you to have a squadron of Krios Venators and a squadron of standard Krios. Um, there are a couple of great um, uh, Magos characters uh, to go with the with the order Reductor. You've got the Magos Reductor um, and they, they have the Master of Destruction rule uh, which allows them to confer on anything, any, anything within six inches um, the Sunder special rule and a plus one on damage table rolls. So yeah, adding Sunder onto the, the Plasma Fusel uh, is very powerful indeed. Um, and then also sticking with the Ordo Reductor, uh, Magus Reductor Caleb Decima, uh, the uni their unique character, um, is also a good synergy as well. He, he keeps the um, Master of Destruction rule uh, but he also gets the option of a Macrocarid Explorator. So we've got one in the background over there uh, on the left-hand side. Um, stick him in that and then have him, mess, have him accompany one or more of these Krios Venators. Uh, and then as long as you're within one of, one of them's within six inches of a Macrocarid, he can put the Master of Destruction rule onto it. So yeah, you, you know, you can imagine a, a row of these tooled up Mechanicum tanks and the sort of damage they can um, deal out is, is immense. So yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, I think uh, fundamentally though, it's quite a it's a pretty simple vehicle. It's got one big gun, and the, that one big gun hits really hard, uh, and it's very straightforward. So yes, there you go. Um, the Mechanicum Krios Venator tank destroyer. Um, yeah, I hope you found that an interesting review. Um, if you've got any views, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments section. Uh, as always, thank you very much for listening. I'll speak to you later, and goodbye.